You know what Mondays are good for? New opportunities. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Monday. It is September 25th. Now, you're probably already familiar with what I do on this show. I go out every day looking for hot penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I look for these stocks by going through charts. I'm looking for charts that have heat first. I'm looking for a chart that maybe has a lot of volume coming in or a breakout setup or a run that just won't quit. Something that makes that chart look tempting. When I find a chart like that, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. When I find one, yeah, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And I like to share these with you every day. And I've got some for you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is Ocean Pal, ticker OP. The company did a reverse split not too long ago, a 1 in 20. She jumped up and she came partway down, kept a lot of it, and she has been going sideways, dead nuts for a long time. And right now, suspiciously, she looks like she's ready to break out. Now, the company hasn't got any news I would call catalysts. They've got news constantly coming out. They're making good revenues. It's just that the chart looks like it's ready to break out finally. So, OP finished the day at $1.94 with over 14% gains. She is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. There's advantages to trading these hot penny stocks on major exchanges. One, there's no transaction fees. They're absolutely free to trade. And two, you can trade pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. So what is Ocean Pal all about? Well, they tell us over here in their most recent news press, Ocean Pal is a global provider of shipping transportation services through its ownership of vessels. The company owns five ships which transport dry bulk cargoes, including such commodities as iron ore, coal, grain, and other materials, alongside world shipping routes. And it is expected that the company's vessels will be primarily employed on their short-term time and voyage charters following the completion of their current employments. So the company owns five tankers, they are partners with another company on two or three tankers, and they lease tankers regularly. They'll lease them for four to six months, pay a daily fee, and get to use them to move their cargo. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, we've got a jump. It's over 600%, going from 50,000 shares a day to 347,000 shares. Looking at the share structure, Oh yeah, I told you they did a reverse split. Look at the end results. Now, you can't have less than a million shares in the float. Well, we've only got a half a million outstanding. That is against NASDAQ rules. Now, I went searching through the disclosures to see if they have a public offering coming. That's how you solve that problem. You just put more shares on the market. Well, I don't see one. Not yet. So as it stands right now, I don't know exactly what it is, but I do know that our float is less than 509,000 shares. If this thing breaks out, somebody could sneeze and push it. So I'm thinking you got to watch this, folks. Until they have a public offering, this has the smallest float I have ever seen. Taking a look at the financials. So at the end of 2022, they did $19 million. And how do they do that? It didn't cost them anything. Nothing in their line of work? That's not digital business. Quarterly, we don't have anything here, but I did jump into the most recent financial. They tell us six months ended June 30th, 2023. They did $9.2 million. Well, annually, they did $19 million last year. So in the last three months, they just virtually did half as much as they did the full year last year. So their revenues are growing. Looking at their disclosures. All right. Most of these 6Ks have to do with the news, which we're going to look at. And then you've got a whole bunch of 13Ds down here. Those are always nice to see. We're not going to jump into them, but an SC13D is when you have a big investor come in. They buy so many shares, they actually own a percentage of the company. And you could have more than one in each one of these. So, you've got investors that all came in just in July. 
So let's go take a look at that news now. So we are going back here to July 27th where the company regained compliance. I don't know what their problem was. It was probably minimum bid requirement, which is why they did a reverse split to get the price back up. And we are over a dollar, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm only presuming that's what it is, but A and B does lead to C. Then they tell us here that they've got some deals they've been making. Ocean Pow invests in two chemical tankers. Uh, they become strategic partners with two methanol-ready chemical tankers. These are not dry bulk. These are for liquid chemicals, so they are now expanding. And then we've got some news here that they chartered. They're leasing a capsized ship for dry bulk. And then their subsidiary, Five Ocean Corporations, is leasing a vessel for four to six months so that they can move cargo. So they're in business. They're doing things. The revenues are growing. And that chart suspiciously looks like it wants to break out. Let me show you what I'm talking about. To do our charting, we're going to be using Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade years ago. But it's still free to sign up and they still give you a free trading platform. So we are looking at Ocean Pal ticker OP. This is a one-year, one-day chart. And that is an accurate chart. What I mean by that is they changed the charts here lately. I don't like it. Whenever there's a reverse split, you normally see a big green bar like that. It jumps from the low price to the new high price. Well, after they change the charts to accommodate the reverse split, all the history changes. Everything gets multiplied by whatever the reverse split was. Well, this was a 1 and 20 reverse split. Well, here in December, we had a high of $5.10. When they change this chart to accommodate that reverse split, that is going to be a big red bar going down, and this is going to be multiplied times 20. So it's going to be something like a $102 high for that day when it never was. So right now, the chart is accurate. We did have a high of $5.10 in December, hit a low here of $0.17 cents in July, had that reverse split, pushed it up here to over 4 bucks. She fell back down to the 200 at the $1.50 range, and she's been going sideways for quite a while. And right now, you can see she's starting to break out, even on our one-day, one-year chart. But it's easier to see the closer we get to it. This is our four-hour, six-month view. We got up to 4.79 before she fell down here to the 200, and when she hit that 200, she just went right through it like it didn't matter, and look at that. A 90 degree angle on a 200 day SMA, you don't see that very often. And normally, I would expect to see this drop way the heck down there for that sort of angle. But it didn't do that. It just kind of fell down here. She got back up onto the 200, wrestled with it in the 50, and she started to push off a few days ago. But it was on Friday. She got her push off of about a buck 66, hit a high today of a buck 94, pulled back. She is now at $1.91. The volume has been growing, but these last two days, look how strong the volume is. And our oscillators, our PPO is pushing up very strong, just like our MACD. Green bars are accumulating here, and our RSI is taking a big jump from 48 up to 67. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So there's our low bubble of $1.53. She pushed herself up onto that 200 rolled around it for a while, and then took a solid bounce on Friday, jumped up, got up onto her nine-day SMA, and launched today. And she hit that 194, and she's been bobbling up there like she doesn't want to come down. And we have one mark after hours here, and it's smack dab in the middle of these big bars. Perfect placement. Osculators. PPO and MACD are climbing strong, though we have a little bit of cooling down on our MACD. You can see this green bar is cooled down. RSI was in the overbought up at 73. She's pulled back to 67 right now. Five day, five minute chart. So she was under the 200 five days ago, and pretty much that's where she came back down to. A little bit lower, she was at $1.62 here. She fell to $1.60 jumped off of that low bubble, got up on top of that 200, 
bounced on that once and launched herself strictly on the nine day SMA. Didn't bother any other SMA the entire day. It wasn't until aftermarket she finally hit that 20 day SMA and our price right now is just underneath the 20 day SMA. Osculators are cool right now. They look like they're about ready to pull back. So I would watch, it could bounce on the 20, it could bounce on the 200 haul, it could bounce off the 50. She goes under the 50, don't even bother watching her. She's gonna come all the way down probably. But right now, she's looking good. She's been going sideways for a long time, people have been patient, and now it's looking exciting. I would put OP on my watch list and keep my eye on her for tomorrow. Next ticker we're taking a look at is UNQL. Unique Logistics International. Now she has an atypical breakout chart that she is breaking out of right now. She is bouncing off of a 52 week low. She just had an update piece of news come out just a few days ago that gives us a lot of information about all of her catalysts. Looks like a real good time to be considering UNQL. She finished the day at a great price, one cent. You buy at a penny, when it hits two cents, you've doubled your money. When it hits three cents, you've tripled your money. Why buy on three and wait to hit nine to triple your money? Isn't it nice to do it on a penny? Absolutely. And she rose today about 15%. She's on the pink tier in current. She's got those two ticks we're always talking about, so she looks good. So what is Unique Logistics about? Well, they tell us here, as a matter of fact, I want to start down here and work my way up. Unique Logistics is a global logistics and freight forwarding company serving a large customer base in the United States that includes well-known retailers and other companies that import goods to the United States, export goods from the United States to other countries, or require other supply chain services, including warehousing. Now, they've got an interesting business model here. The company provides a full range of global logistics services by providing to its customers a robust international network that strategically supports the movement of customers' goods. Acting solely as a third-party logistics provider, Unique purchases available cargo space in volume from its network of carriers, such as airlines, ocean shipping, and trucking lines, and resells that space to our customers. Unique Logistics does not own any of these ships, trucks, or aircraft and does not plan on entering into the ownership model. The company's services enable its customers to outsource to the company sections of their supply chain process. Easy business, right? So, what was the relative volume around the company today? What? Was she halted? <laughs> what happened there? That's one buy. 1,000 shares. She's normally doing 653,000 shares, and today she did 1,000 shares. Honestly, I don't know what the deal is. I didn't see that she was halted, and I have a hard time imagining the way the chart looks that only one person <laughs> was interested in buying. But that's what it says right now, 1,000 shares today, which isn't a good thing. Share structure for UNQL. Kind of high. Outstanding share count is virtually 800 million. Unrestricted shares, which I think of as the float, 444 million. Now, maybe that's not the float. Maybe it's less. Maybe it's more. What are the financials for Unique Logistics? Revenues look pretty good to me. She had a big increase from 2020 to 2021, over 100%, jumping from 115 to $371 million. Whoa, what happened in 2022? She hit a billion dollars. Now, this is a huge increase here. Normally, I would jump to the conclusion that they sold an asset, but this company says they don't own anything. So, I guess that's all revenues? And then it dropped all the way back down to $325 million at the end of their fiscal year, May 2023. And they got to keep only $36 million out of that. <laughs> only. I wish I only had $36 million. Looking at her quarterly, a year ago, they were doing pretty good, $168 million, $136 million. And then they dropped all the way down to $49 million. And now they're starting to come back up. We're at $50.5 million right now. Disclosures for the company. 
Well, we've got the most recent financial over here. You know what I always say about those? Forget about Google. If you want to know about a company, just go straight to the financial. Forget the news presses, forget searches. They got everything in those financials. And we got an 8K here. What is this 8K about? Let's take a look at this uh, promissory note for a million dollars. You can think of that as kind of a loan. So let's take a look at that news now. So they've got lots of news up here, but it's all outdated. Most recent one is February of 2021. We've got one piece of news. This came out on the 19th of September. What was that? Wednesday or Tuesday? Something like that. Unique Logistics International reports financial results for fiscal 2023 highlighted by a 134% growth in net income. But they give us more information than just that. They do tell us the net income, and I don't want to go through any of the other numbers, but the net income has jumped from 3.5 million up to 8.2 million. So it has increased 134%. Stockholders' equity has also increased. I don't know why they didn't say that. Jumping from 5.8 million to 17.6 million. That's like close to 300% increase. That's for us. Now, they give us some information down here. The acquisitions we completed in February 2023 are also seeing business growth in the resurgent freight market. We look forward to reporting a full year of consolidated results in fiscal year 2024. It was with this company down here. This is Unique Logistics International. Well, they did a deal with Unique Logistics Holdings, and they got the entire company that had eight subsidiaries. Then they go on to tell us, we are also excited to be one step closer to listing on the NASDAQ through our previously announced merger with the SPAC Edify Acquisition Corps, which remains on track. We expect to move quickly towards our executing of mergers and acquisition strategy soon after the business combination is completed. To get this information, I had to actually jump over to the SPAC Edify Acquisitions and go through their filings. We don't have one of these over here. So they tell us it was on December 18th of last year that Edify Acquisitions entered into that plan of merger with Unique Logistics. And here recently, September 13th and 18th, they have made some amendments to the agreement simply because it's taken too long. Time can kill a deal. So they've taken care of everything. It's back on track and it's all looking good. So you do have a merger. They are going to be uplisting to the NASDAQ. I don't know when it's going to happen. Hopefully soon. The chart is set up right now. They're making money. It all looks good. Take a look at this chart. We are charting unique logistics, ticker UNQL. This is a one-year, one-day chart. Our 52-week high hit in December of 3.4 cents, and our 52-week low of 007 hit at the beginning of September. Jumping on down to that six-month, four-hour view. Six months ago, we had a high of 2.2 cents. She fell down underneath that 200, fell hard and fast, has had a few breaks through the 200, but you see how steep it is. There's no way she's going to be able to jump up there and stand. She'll slip and fall and come right back down. We've got to wait for that 200 to start to get flat, and that's what's happening right now. She is just now starting to turn. As you can see, our other SMAs are all starting to turn up right now. It was three days ago. It was on the 18th. She started to move, but the news didn't come out until the 19th. Who knew what, when? So she jumped from about 0073 all the way up to a penny. You're looking at uh, about 50% run right there in the last three days. That has put her over the 200, and she is sitting up there right now at an even penny. Our osculators, our PPO is very strong, pushing up just like our MACD. Bars are solid green, and our RSI is up there at 61 right now. Checking out that 20-day, one-hour view. So she was on a slow decline here for about 12 days, maybe 16. And then, as I said, on the 18th, she took a big jump before the news came out. She jumped from 0073 up to 0092. You're looking at like a 35, 40% jump before the news came out. She came back down, 
bounced on the 50-day, hard and solid, no drooping underneath, and she took off again. And look at the size of these bars. We had little itty-bitty bars here, nice size bars here, and now they're getting gigantic. Osculators, our PPO and our MACD are pushing up right now and climbing. RSI is climbing. That is climbing. <laughs> is climbing. It has gone from 50 up to 62. And our five-day, five-minute chart. We got a low bubble back here of 0073. And three days, she jumped up there to that 0097. That is like 45% gains. Fell back to the 50, skirted underneath it a little bit, and then came back up with those huge bars. And she's got some volatility in here. But now she's not on the 50 anymore. She's now on the 20-day SMA. And as you can see, over the last five days, the last two have had strong volume. Osculators. Our, our PPO and our MACD both had a bounce. You can see that right there, and they are starting to climb right now. So did our RSI. That went from 41 to 62. Everything is looking good here, folks. It looks like it wants to run. But keep in mind, I got to remember this. This is today. That's today. That was Friday. This was Friday. We only had a 1,000 shares sell today, and I really don't know why. I wish they'd put a note somewhere if it had been halted or something like that. So, UNQL, she does have a merger with a SPAC that is on the books, put together back in December. We're waiting for that to conclude. The company's making money and the charts are set up. It's at least worth putting on your watch list. UNQL. Maybe you remember this one. This is Toy, the Oncology Institute. She was getting a lot of attention a while back. She's been climbing ever since July. And here recently, she finally took a dip hard and she fell down to the 50, which she hit secure and she is bouncing off of right now. Now, her primary catalyst, honestly, is that they just became compliant again with the NASDAQ. I know it doesn't sound like a serious catalyst, but people who are invested <laughs> love it when their companies are compliant, though she does have other news as well. So Toy finished today at $1.52 with about 2.7% gains. She is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. So what does Toy do? Well, they tell us here they were founded in 2007 and they are advancing oncology by delivering highly specialized value-based cancer care in the community setting. Toy offers cutting-edge, evidence-based cancer care to a population of approximately 1.8 million patients. Holy cow! I think I was impressed with this before. Including clinical trials, transfusions, and other care delivery models traditionally associated with the most advanced care delivery organizations. With 100 plus employed clinicians and more than 800 teammates in over 65 clinic locations and growing, Toy is changing oncology for the better. So what was their relative volume today? What? No, I was not expecting that. She dropped about 75% of her volume, going from a quarter million, 250,000, down to 64,000 shares today. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Share structure for the Oncology Institute. Well, they only give us one bit of information, outstanding share count. That is about 73 million. Now, we know it's not going to be any higher than that for our float, but it could be. That's right, Tommy, considerably less. Looking at the financials for Toy, she's doing pretty good. From 2020 to 2021, she has been growing every single year, finishing 2022 at $252 million, getting to keep $52 million of that. Her quarterly, hey, we get them here. Uh, 60, 64, 71. Look at that. Every single one of them is growing sequentially right after each other. The last quarterly report, we did $80.2 million. Looking good. Looking at the company's disclosures, we do have a couple of recent ones here. We've got a Form 3 that came out at the beginning of the month. This tells you how many shares one of the management owned. And then we've got an 8K, and this correlates to them going compliant. That news came out on the 18th. The Oncology Institute regains compliance with NASDAQ listing requirements. Woohoo! 
Then we've got two pieces of news back here. One at the end of July, the company partners with House RX to accelerate growth of pharmaceutical operations. And then we have one here, August 9th. Let's just jump on into this. They tell us here that Ambiance Healthcare and the Oncology Institute partner to create a best-in-class oncology experience for patients and clinicians leveraging breakthrough generative AI technology. Ambiance Healthcare, a market leader in generative AI technology for the clinical documentation, workflows, and patient experience, we're talking a lot of paperwork, if you will, and the Oncology Institute, a premier provider of cutting-edge cancer care, are announcing a landmark agreement to implement a new AI operating system for the oncology care. The average oncologist spends as much as two-thirds of their time in the electric health records. They're playing with the computer. They're just right there for two-thirds of their time instead of with their patients. We could use AI to do that. To address these challenges, Ambiance Healthcare has developed a suite of generative AI products that enable a human-centered, value-based approach to care delivery. We believe this agreement between Ambiance Healthcare and the Oncology Institute represents the first national-scale rollout of a generative AI technology to support oncology care delivery in the United States. Hot. Let's go take a look at that chart. I'm ready to play with my toy, T-O-I. <laughs> this is the Oncology Institute. This is a one-year, one-day chart. Our 52-week high hit in October of $5.47, and our 52-week low hit in June at $0.33. Cents. Now, I've got a support up here just before she fell and gapped. We got a huge gap here from $4.45 all the way down to about $1.10. Now, we've got a strong resistance right here. You can see it sitting on the top. That's where we're banging our head right now. That is at $1.77. And then underneath where everything was sitting, that is our strong support. And that is where she's sitting and bouncing right now. She has been stuck in this channel. And as you can see, even on the yearly chart, she is breaking out right now over top of that 200-day SMA. Coming down to that six-month, four-hour view, our high came actually about a week ago on the six-month chart. That is $1.78 when she's bouncing in this channel here. She hit this low of $0.33 cents and had a nice run. She went from $0.33 cents all the way up to about a buck twenty. You're looking at 350% gains. But you see how steep that 200 is? She could not stick it up there. She fell back down to the 50, had to wrestle with the 200 all over again, and then she got a good run. Fell back down to the 200, bounced, put herself up into this channel, and that's where she's been for about 10, 12 days now. She's fallen back down to the 50-day SMA, which is also on top of our support. And she is riding that 50-day SMA, pushed herself up onto the 9-day SMA. She's getting lighter and lighter and starting to climb. Everything is looking good here. Osculators, um... They're a bit mixed right now, to be honest with you. The MACD looks like it might be trying to do a recovery. Our red bars are getting smaller here. We are still on top of our pink up here in our PPO, but it's tough to tell where she's going. And our RSI, even though we've got green bars, says it's falling. So we're probably going to see a red bar on the one-hour chart. Let's come on down to that one hour. We got a low in this corner of 72 cents. Got over top of that 200 and just kept on climbing. Went over top of that support, bounced on it once, hit her head, bounced on it twice, and she's climbing. After market, she has pulled back. Looks like she's right there with the 50-day SMA. Looks like the 9-day is trying to cross the 50, which is a good thing. We did have a crossover on our PPO, and we just crossed the signal line on our MACD, although our RSI is still falling. Coming down to that five-day, five-minute. Woo! All right, looks like she found the halfway point. We got a high here of $1.78, drops down to $1.28, and right now we are here at $1.50, right in the middle. She was above the 200, below the 200, and now she's sitting on the 200. And right now at this moment, we have the 50-day SMA crossing. 
I would expect, I know this is after market and it's kind of the wild, wild west after market. Reading the charts after market is not the same as active time. So we could see a bounce simply because this 50 day SMA is crossing to the 200 and so is the 200 haul. Though the oscillators say she is coming down, but she could easily bounce on this. She's definitely one to watch, folks. T-O-I. She's gotten compliant. She's making money. She's in the news doing things. So I think she belongs on your watch list, like all the stocks I show you. But please do some more due diligence. You know I'm only showing you a cup out of a gallon of information. Don't cheat yourself. Do the DD. You deserve it. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.